Hey folks, welcome to Watson's Wagons. Mike Watson here, your friendly neighborhood uh, model guy located in Pennsylvania. Um, I gotta share a story with you guys. Um, today, I went to Red Lion, Pennsylvania to go pick up a kit that I, you know, coordinated a purchase on uh, with an individual and her name is Barb. And it is for the Willie L. Bennett Chesapeake Bay Skipjack Wooden Ship Model Kit. Model Ship Ways. Hama, hama, hama. And, you know, what a great... The box is in great shape. Um, the contents are all there. The, it is not has not been built yet. <clears throat> um, and so I'm not going to, like, rip this apart and everything, but just to kind of give you an idea of, you know... All the pieces, parts are there. The plans are rolled up. There is a parts list as well with the kit to include a manual on building this thing. And, yeah, it's cool. And, you know, a lot of you guys that have been following me at all, you know, you know, when I see a deal, uh, I'll pick it up. And this will be the third one this year that I found that uh, I... I you know, wanted to jump on, and you, you saw the cross-section ship, and I think I drove like an hour to grab this one, and I'm pretty sure I did a video on this. I don't know if I did or not, but anyhow, <clears throat> um, so yeah, so the Chesapeake Bay Skipjack, it's a pretty cool looking model, and you know, it's one of those uh, deals that I'm going to get to one day, maybe in the winter time can start it, you know, who knows which one I'm going to start, but I don't want to talk about this, okay, as cool as that model is, um, <clears throat> there's something else to talk about that is far cooler, you know, I've met a lot of nice people in my lifetime, all right, um, and, but I mean special, where, you know, you're, you're, you go out, you bump into folks, you exchange pleasantries, you move on. But when I went over to Barb and Lowell, okay, that's the names. I'm not going to give up their last name out of privacy. But they invited me into their home and uh, to come, you know, come look at the kit and everything. Beautiful house. And I'm sitting here and Lowell's trying to explain a little bit about the kit. And I'm looking right past him. And they got this fireplace there, right? And they had this beautiful log, uh, like half log mantle or whatever above the fireplace. There's a little display cabinet below it. And it's it's all ducks, right? Hand-carved ducks. Like, nice. Okay, and I'm talking about, you know, ducks that were carved for the purposes of being decoys. And these were done years ago when, you know, when Lowell and his dad would well, go duck hunting or whatever. Um, his father recently passed away, was 95 years old. And I was just mesmerized by these ducks, you know, different types of mallards and things or whatever. So I'm looking at this and I am completely blown away by the craftsmanship Uh in, in these carvings. Every one of these ducks are made from scratch. And his dad, I guess, has been carving these things forever. And they are like the most professional things I've ever seen. A spe the little ones. <clears throat> he has a cabinet with ducks that are, <laughs> you know, they're about the size of that. Uh, he's got some that are, you know, teeny tiny, like they're not any longer than this. But the craftsmanship is immaculate uh, in, in these things. And I'm talking, you know, this is all uh, freshly carved wood, okay? Some of it's pine, some of it's made out of, you know, lead castings and stuff that he has. But the, uh, the attention to detail <clears throat> that his father put into these things, uh, I've, I have never personally seen craftsmanship like that in my lifetime. Now, he's like, well, Dad, he showed me one that his dad had, and uh, 
it was uh, in a competition. I think it came in second place. And, and I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking, how did that not even win first? I mean, <coughs> the way that the feathers were carved on this, I wish I had pictures to show you guys or have it in my hands, but, uh, and, and maybe one day if I see him again, he'll let me videotape some of this stuff, but the, the feathers and the intricate carvings in for each little feather and the way that he painted this stuff, you know, you have a, you have that core of the feather that comes out and then all the little, you know, I call them hairs, but maybe it's just the feather that's on the, on, on the whatever. You know, those things were like sort of a semi-gloss, and then there was a sheen on the feather itself, and just, and there were, uh, you know, flat tones and gloss tones, and, and just, it looked real. That's all I got to say, it looked real. And I, I'm just blown away. And so then he's got these little ones that are, you know, like there were some swans that he showed me that were probably that long. And <clears throat> so you have the swan body, you've got the... You know, the, the neck is a piece and then the curvature around the head and everything is another piece, but it all looks like it was carved out of a solid piece of wood. And it is dead accurate. The eyeballs, he said his dad used little drops of glue for the eyeballs and the eyeballs sort of pop out a little bit in these things. The hair, do I have, what did I do with those? Uh, <clears throat> I have some brushes. I don't know what I did with them, but I have some brushes that that do hairline painting, right? And even on the on the ducks that were this little, they were uh, just. I mean, folks, I can't describe this, um, but every feather, every shadow, everything, and even on these carvings that he had. If you flip the duck upside down, you could see the jawline of the duck where it was carved out, where the duck would, <laughs> the duck would talk, right? So, I guess do ducks have lips. I don't know, but the little the little uh, uh, nasal passages on the duck, the the you know the bottom jaw portion of it, the 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 way that he incorporated feathers into the back of the of the body, it's just so realistic and he was doing stuff like this on the little ones too well i i was i was blown away and his wife barb she <laughs> she's got the cutest set of dimples i have ever seen in my life beautiful smile beautiful lady beautiful couple and i don't know i was going there to pick up a model and i ended up spending some time there with them and visiting and learning about their, his father <clears throat> and being able to see the artwork that this man produced. Then I learn, you know, as I'm leaving, that that Lowell also does carvings. Lowell! I got to come out and see you, bro, so I can see your work. So, definitely, uh, definitely an artist in the family. And this guy must have left an awesome legacy. He told me a story about the one decoy that he had. Where they were out hunting and stuff and you know there was a storm coming a hurricane i don't know where they were at but they had to get the hell out of there and left the decoys behind well off they went they ended up some dam somewhere or down river and never to be seen again so his dad and maybe he had a he had other people out there they put an apb out uh to keep an eye out on like the antique markets and things like that to see if people were selling decoys. Sure enough, they found one of his decoys, flipped it over. <clears throat> there was a metal tag that he that he had nailed into that decoy with his name, whatever his initials were. <clears throat> and, and just, I mean, the way that the whole thing was constructed the uh, and, and weighted down and just, and, the, the weight of them, um, very heavy, you know, and the one duck, oh, let me get back to the, to the deal that, where it got lost, uh, they found this thing at a sale, 
and his father ended up buying his own duck back for a hundred bucks. <laughs> so, and, he, and these are carvings that are worth hundreds of hundreds of dollars uh, if, if you were to try to go buy one today. So, number one, I've never seen so many ducks in my life. They were all mint and beautiful and pristine and extremely precise. So, uh, I, I'm telling you, I, I got way more out of that visit than anybody else did. Uh, or, or, you know, I didn't even have to leave with this boat. Okay, that's how enriching the whole event was. So, hey, Barb, <clears throat> Lowell, thank you so much for taking the time to share that with me. I appreciate it. Um, and my heart, my cup is overfloweth. Yeah, with lots of goodness. And uh, and it's also pretty apparent how much you care for your father. So um, just awesome. Just awesome. So look, folks, you take it easy. Um, if I ever get a chance to get out there again and visit, um, I will see if they will allow me to at least take some photos and share that with you. But again, I want to respect their privacy. And uh, just to tell you a little bit of what I did tell you, I did get permission to do that. But all right, look, you have a good, you have a good night. Uh, you know, go out there and work on some stuff, man. And I, I suspect that some of you are going to watch this video and come over the top with maybe some stories about the same thing. But I had no idea that 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 was a thing, right? So, all right, interesting how a model kit can lead you to beautiful people. Have a good night, folks.